Good morning. We're back today with more breakdown of Decision 2016. Of course, the big one everyone is talking about is Donald Trump's win over Hillary Clinton in the presidential election. Now, this is coming as a surprise to a lot of experts, some who predicted a Clinton victory. Joining us now to break down the numbers in the presidential race is Dr. Rachel Bittekoffer from Christopher Newport University. Thank you so much. And Dr. Bittekoffer, you actually helped put together some of the polls that CNU put out leading up to this election. Why don't we focus on that? Because I know polls are something that a lot of folks were focusing on going into the election. The national polls didn't quite play out the way some planned, but the local polls when it came to Virginia were correct. Yes, that's correct, actually. Um I have to point out, I'm one of those experts that did expect a Clinton victory based on polling from other states. Uh, but in Virginia, we um, our surveys from the Wasson Center for Public Policy were right on. We expected about five or six point spread for Clinton, and that's ultimately what happened. Why do you think there was such a difference between the accuracy of the Virginia poll specifically versus some of the national polls? Um, well, you know, uh, my colleague and I, Quentin Kidd, are both uh, PhDs that have studied um, political behavior and the voters very extensively. Mm -hmm. um, so we like to think that our, you know, theoretical training in the electorate really helps us model our weights and model our electorate, you know, a little bit better than maybe some of the non-academic polling outfits. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, and, uh, you know, another advantage is that the Virginia electorate is fairly predictable. Mm -hmm. um, we looked back through data through 2000 for an analysis for our daily press piece, and we found that actually, you know, most demographic groups in terms of college education, uh, the racial demographics of the state, and especially women, were pretty predictable, and so we were able to use that to estimate uh, accurately, as it turns out. Mm -hmm. You looked at some of the local races, and you looked at Virginia Beach for those who are just tuning in and how the mayor won easily, 53%, uh, uh, Mayor Will Sessoms, but folks did not want light rail. Are you surprised by that? Yeah, um, so I'm not surprised. Uh, usually when people are given uh, something and they have the price tag for it, it does make it a little bit harder, especially given the announcement that the state budget was um, lower than expected. Uh, so in that regard, um, it's not too surprising. What is surprising, though, is to find, um, you know, we have a mayor that highly supported it, winning re-election, and then the main initiative that he was advocating for through the cycle fails. So mm -hmm. that's something unusual. And that's sure going to be fascinating hmm. moving forward on that to see what uh, Mayor Sessoms and the Virginia Beach City Council can do when it comes to light rail. So we'll be paying very close attention to that. And of course, we want to focus on the House 2nd District, Scott Taylor versus Sean Brown. Taylor won. Not a big surprise there. Any any shock in, in how big the margin was? or? No, I mean, I think I, I pretty much expected that. Scott Taylor was an excellent candidate. I think he demonstrated that when he um, won the Republican primary. So given the conditions of that House district, I, I think that was pretty, uh, seen that coming. Mm -hmm. You were watching local and national races. Any other surprises? Um, I think it's probably a surprise a little bit to see just how much Latino voters were um, turned on and mobilized out west, right? I mean, we kind of get lost in the overall picture mm -hmm. of, you know, the ultimate um, results. But when we look out to the west coast or western states and uh, we see very, very mobilized electorate in Arizona, they were able to actually um, oust a 24-year incumbent sheriff, a very controversial sheriff there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that's interesting. But I think for me, the big takeaway is it looks like we may be creeping to another election 2000 scenario where the popular vote total goes to one candidate and the electoral college and thus the presidency to another. That's right. And a lot of people are focused on that. A lot of folks talking about that on social media right now. Uh, when you think about that happening and then also the polls going into this election, could you foresee any big changes in the future for the political scene when it comes to polling or uh, how people will now try to go after their votes? Yes, yeah, so in general, we, we tend to uh, react to our past um, experience, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so what I would expect is a lot of the national polling outfits are going to say, okay, we were too optimistic about black turnout in um, urban areas, about youth turnout across the nation, and they're going to be tempted to roll those numbers back um, you know, four years from now, possibly, depending and, on the political conditions. And when we look into who responded to the polls, do you see uh, why folks voted? Did they vote against Hillary or did they vote for Trump? Well, it certainly is a mix. Uh, certainly within Trump's most strident supporters, there's a, you know, a strong anti-Hillary 
um, you know, fervor. I mean, nothing demonstrates that more than the chance of lock her up, lock her up at his rallies. Uh, so I do think to some extent it is dissatisfaction or distrust of Hillary Clinton. But I also do think that it's the white working class voters in rural areas. I mean, look at the Midwest. We have states that haven't voted for a Democrat since the 80s going for Donald Trump. That is definitely related to his populism, economic populism message, especially around trade issues. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see where we end up. Dr. Bittekoffer of Christopher Newport University, we sure appreciate you taking the time, giving us your expertise this morning. It was a real pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thanks.